If you got to catch one in a pen and he's looking away from you, woo, walk up to him, let the horse turn his head to where he can see you. Speak to him, put your hand on him, woo, woo. Now he's comfortable with you. He knows where you are. Walk over here, let him, if you can see his eye, he can see you. He can see me right out of that right eye because I can see it. A horse has monocular vision. He can look right back here with one eye. If you can see his eye, he can see you. So you ought to always put your hand on him. You ought to speak to him, let him look at you. In this tape, we're beginning to advance our horses. And we're beginning to see that his repertoire of things to do is rather complete. We're beginning to put a foundation under him by teaching him all of the basic maneuvers. In this film, again, we emphasize again the importance of controlling the head, being able to do something with her legs, with his body, and to keep some forward motion in him. As we begin to put all of the fundamentals now on the foundation that the horse needs to be a really good horse. All right, as we try to advance our horses to more and different things we can do with them, let's start and talk about some of our real basic and fundamental training techniques. Three things that are real fundamental in having a nice horse that we can do a lot of things on, as we've already talked about, is having control of his head, being able to put his head where we want it, being able to move him, have him bitted. We've talked about bidding, the learned response, and having enough skill then to be able to do it. So if we've got his head, or we can do with it what we want, got control of his head. Next thing we need is real good control of his body with our legs, or we can move him with our legs. I can take a leg, move the hind end around, I can move either end I want. I can move the horse around in front. I can move the front end around. I can, I can move his four quarters around. I think I can move the back end around a little more desirable with this mare. Where I get her kind of to turn on the forehand. I need to control, the point I'm trying to make is I need to be able to control the hind quarters, I need to be able to control the four quarters, and I need to be able to control the head. And I've got to have both of those to do it. I've got to have both my hands and my feet. You can't do it all with one or the other. So again, we're talking about <clears throat> getting some coordination, some versatility to herself as a rider, and the versatility also to, uh, trained into her horse. Now, if we're going to first talk about trying to get a little control with our feet, a little where we've got some control where we can move the horse over. Probably one of the best ways to start, <clears throat> and I don't think we have to start at any one place, I'm going to go over here at the fence and talk about just trying to teach your horse to side pass. There's a lot of ways to teach a horse to side pass. One of the ways that I used years ago was park my horse within about a step of the fence. Ooh, no, the trick comes later, right here. And then put the leg on him, let him move to the fence, find out that's home base, where that he'll quit. So we ride him up here and park him. Ooh. Let him sit there, whoo, and then put the leg on him and let him get over to the fence. And he finds that's home base, so he starts trying to get to the fence because that is a home base. I let him rest when he gets there. Now, the first time you try that with your horse, he's not going to do like this horse. He won't know how to step sideways, won't know how to get off of your feet. So you may use a technique, put the foot on him, you back him over a little and then set him over and if I could use the very uh, simple term of worry until he learns to step across. And you'll have to help him. He won't do it all at one time. You may have to move one end a while and then move the other end until the horse learns to step sideways and move away from your pressure. That's a good technique. Another is if you look at me right from the rear, spread my hands, drive the horse right up to the fence, and hold him there. Whoa. You hold a horse right at the fence. Spread your hands where he can't go either way, and then start putting a leg on him. Ask him to side pass, move off of your leg, side pass down the fence. Whoa. Whoa. And in here, if your horse gets a little 
anticipating too much as mines are doing right now, calm the horse and just sit there a little bit. And then put the leg gently on there, teach the horse to move off of your leg, look at the horse's feet, watch him cross his feet as he learns to take that step sideways. Let the horse again remember what we said in psychology, not move out of fear, but move out of obedience, where that he relaxes and steps across, very clean, very nice step. Do what I've done, take the other foot very much out of the horse, very muchly so. Exaggerate taking that foot off for a while, while you put this one in. and have some tolerance at this stage while your horse is trying to learn, trying to get relaxed. Ooh, all right? So you can do that some, and again, when you start that with your horse, he is not gonna step over like this mare does. If he doesn't step over, put the leg on him, back him around a little bit, push him over a little bit in front, and then stop him, and. Maybe you can t use your hands. And again, the term worry one is a pretty good term until all of that eventually develops into a straight step across. You saw me have to discipline this mare pretty good. And I won't spur this mare again I'll barely touch her with the calf of my leg, just to feel, but going to the right, and your horses will be that way, they'll have one way better than the other one. Smyrna wants to get scared, anticipate a little bit, ooh. So I've not put another spur in her, and I won't, because I've got my message across. Again, the principle of reinforcement. I'm asking her with something she can tolerate, which is a gentle pressure on her rib and at her mouth. And she's going to tolerate it now. She's making an avoidance response, getting away from me trying to be disciplined her and spur her as hard as I did then that one time. So that's one way to start getting some feel in your horse's belly. Start getting him where you can move him off. The other way, a real good way to do it, and I'll use the rail again, is to come down the rail and begin to start teaching your horse to two-track. Go down the rail, and again, we've got some control of his head. Push his head, and drop. I'm dropping my right leg, the off leg, down into the horse, and I'll get the horse to move off of my leg. We use that technique a great deal to try to get the horse to operate. I'll pull the head, and that's the left leg. Left leg, it's going into the horse. You get the horse to where he's responsive, and he'll move away from you. You can use a rail a great deal to start that. After you kind of get it started, then just walk your horse out, step him over, teach him to step over. Just hold your hands firm, put the leg on him, let him walk forward. Step across, do it at a walk. This mare would do this real nice at the walk if I had not already spurred her pretty hard in the belly over there a while ago. It's a chance for me to relax on her and let her relax a little bit. And that's sometimes a calculated risk whether I should have done that or not. Uh, you know, I think in a training program it's probably right. Same time I need to let her relax, drop off. She still remembers it. And that's the thing you need to remember about your horse. She remembers it, and she resents it, and she'll try to really be sharp and honor. Once you've kind of got it at a walk, or you can do it like you want, go to a trot. Go to a trot. Try to move your horse off of your leg. I'll trot this mare around and try to come right straight towards the camera and let you watch is I'll just try to move the mare over by just, you can see me drop that leg in there. Actually, what's happening right here a little bit that's got this mare a little shook up, I'm trying to be obvious enough with my cues that you can see what I'm doing so that you can pick them up on the camera and learn how to do it with your horse. 
And the first time you have to show it to your horse, you have to be about that obvious. He has to see it. You, anybody sitting watching, you can see what you're doing. Once a horse gets pretty well schooled, he does not like to be asked that hard. I can move this mare and y'all won't hardly see me move my foot, and that suits her a lot better. And you just don't need to, because if you put that hard pressure that a naive horse needs, then the horse is schooled up now to be a lot lighter, and she resents that heavy pressure. She thinks I'm punishing her, where you can just teach her to move away from your leg. And you can't do this too much. Like to keep it quiet, we do. We, this is a suppling exercise. Once we get our horse schooled, we'll do this before we ever ride him very much. When we're warming him up, check him. That's kind of like getting in your car and seeing if the brakes still work. See if all these buttons still work. Remind him what they are. Remind him about his face. Pick up on his face and turn him around. Bump him on his mouth and see if he's still light in it. Put a leg in him, see if he'll still move over. Now she's getting a lot quieter as I've quit kind of jobbing her too heavy and are doing a lot nicer. And that one quick jab I did in her belly over here, I'm paying the consequences for it. At the same time, I probably accomplish what I want. The mare is very obedient now, and that's what you find with a lot of negative reinforcements. Your first reaction, you say, oh, that's, that's wrong, I got too much. But if you'll stay, and let, the mark, let, let your horse come back down, you'll be happy with it. You'll be happy. If you went back and spurred her two or three more times, you'd have been unhappy because she'd be up in the rafters and that wouldn't suit you. But now, just very nice, I have not had a spur back in her. I've just laid my leg on her, and that's enough. And I'm getting what I appreciate now. Very quiet, very relaxed. I can stick her shoulder out. I can push her this way. I can stick this shoulder out, I can push her over. And you watch it, just hold her face kind of with my hands, don't let her go off. So you spend quite a bit of time at that. And I've not got any more pressure on her face than I absolutely need. I keep using the term face, and you need to realize that I, it's a slang term we're referring to pulling on the horse's mouth. Because when we pull there, we call the front of his head his face, and we try to talk about standing his face up and uh, it's just kind of slang, and what I'm talking about is really pulling on his mouth, where that I just hold enough to keep the horse from, from, because when you put pressure on him, it should mean go forward, all right? Now, you put pressure in the front, and you stop the forward motion, and the horse must then get away from the pressure. He learns to move off of it. That's why feet and hands are both important. One of them in its absence means one thing, both of them together mean something else because the pressure on a leg right here with the head loose is gonna to mean to move out. But if I put pressure there and hold the face, then it's gonna to mean to move over. Okay, so we need to get pressure on our horse, we need to get them relaxed, and we need to get the horse to moving off again of fear, of not of fear, but of obedience. And if you get a lot of nice contingent reinforcement in there, they soon will learn to relax with it. They'll soon learn to relax. And as I can get this mare to relax, I'll get out of her mouth a little, let her walk around here and relax, and don't stay in what we call kind of pressure-type training continually. Stay in there continually. So we got the head fixed. We got some pressure on our horse to where we can give. Now we're ready to talk about a horse picking up a lead, picking up a lead. Now, there may be some people viewing here that are looking that really don't understand what a lead is. A lead means that the horse does not move with both front feet at the same time. One of them is always in front of the other one. The back foot is the same way. He does not move forward with both back feet parallel. One of them is in, in front of the other one. And it's all, all four-legged animals, as far as I know, have leads in which we move with the same with two feet on the same side in front. When I push this horse up, and this horse is going to the left, about the only way that he can go comfortably to the left is have the left legs leading. That's where the term lead comes from. It's gonna be leading. And he cannot go very comfortably that way 
in the right lead and go to the left. So if we're going to push him up into the left lead, now you can see where my pressure off of my leg is going to be important. We're going to get him to pick him up, and we, if he's in the left lead in front and the right lead behind, that's very uncoordinated. We call him disunited. He's cross-fire, and we're in trouble. This horse is really all of his athletic ability and coordination is gone. So you watch as I push this mare up, see the left foot come forward first, both front and rear. Now that's what we're talking about with a lead. And a horse going to the left must learn to use his left lead. Now we can take this same horse and turn him around, bring him around to the right, and when we push him up here, he should, you should see the right leg come forward first. Right leg. Okay? Ooh. A lot of ways to determine whether your horse is on the correct lead. It won't be long after you ride a while until you'll know very easily whether he's on the correct lead or not because when this horse is on the left lead, left lead, this side of his body is slightly ahead of the right. And by doing so, it's actually pushed my left foot a little in front of my right. Uh, this is about, if you could look at me loping straight to you, that's about the position I'd be in with the left foot a little forward because the horse is leading here. It'll twist you a little. We all have to work to stay as straight as we can and to try to get our horses to lope as straight as we can without a lot of diagonal to them and to let us track straight. So that's leads. How do we train them? How do we teach them to the horse? Probably one of the best ways and we could do this probably better with a real naive horse, is to let a horse in the beginning use that first technique we use of standing up in the saddle, the squall rein, and just letting the horse trot and letting the horse push up into the lead. Now here it's a very natural thing. You've got weight down in your left stirrup, the horse is leaning to the left, Ooh. And I could just keep extending this mare until she loped in the left lead. Now, the reason I don't want to do it on this mare is that we love that long trot. Now, she's past that beginning stage. So we've taken out. We don't want her to lope out of that extended trot. So I'm not going to do that with her. But you can do that very effectively, very effectively. That's the reason our good hunt seat horses trot so long and so pretty and so free and never break. We do not canter them out of that gate, and they know to never canter. I do my western horse that way after I get him to a certain stage. After I get him past the very naive stage and up advanced as far as this mare, I just quit loping him out of that extended trot. But in the beginning, it's a very good way to start one. And what you're doing, you're going around there and you just let him find that lead himself. I don't care how far he trots. Let him find it. Let him relax and get into it. Later on, he won't trot so far. It'll get easier for him to do, and it's just a very natural thing. Not a lot of cues involved. Horse just got up in it. And then as he gets easier, then you let him trot a few steps, and then you squeeze him with this off leg. Off leg does not mean left lead yet. It will eventually, but it doesn't mean, the right leg doesn't mean the left lead yet. What means the left lead is the fact that I'm still in this circle, and I'm still trotting, and I've got him bent, and that's natural. And as I start then putting him into the lead, I start using the off leg. I've got to tell him to lope some way. I can tell him any way I want to. I can flip him on the ear if I want to teach that to mean lope. But I'm going to use the left leg because that's going to be compatible, or the right leg because that's going to be compatible with everything we're going to teach him. The side pass, the move off of leg pressure, and all of that that we view. So I start pairing that leg over there. And you finally get the horse to where that he has very little trot, or he can even do it from a standstill, and you can squeeze him with the right leg, and he gets up in that circle. Now, leave your circle in there, but push him right up into it with the right leg. I used the right leg then. Ooh. Ooh. And in the beginning, if the horse is having some trouble, take him out here, and I just bend him to the left and watch my right leg push the horse up. Now, I have to do that very subtle again, using the coarse cues doesn't suit this mare. We've been in the jackpot two or three times in this little session because I try to, ooh, I try to go back and treat her like a naive horse, and she's schooled up above that. She doesn't like to go back down there and school again. 
but she's been there. Most all of them have. So that's one way in which we can do that. Now we still got the circle, got my hands. Now I'm a, taking us through a period of time here that might be two, three months, might be six months, but probably no longer than that. So where we've got this horse, according of where he is, what age he is, uh, older horses that have a bad problem uh, already have developed a bad habit. So we have to break that habit. And sometimes that takes a lot longer than it does to take a naive horse and start from scratch and acquire everything right to begin with. But what I want to show is how we can go up in that and progressive that we can take that same horse now and I'm going to start taking the circle out on this maneuver. I'm going to start taking it out. Now what we do to the left, we've got to do to the right. So I'm going to take a lot of the circle out. I'm going to bend just a little. I'm going to pull down and trot. We call this a serpentine. I'm going to pick up this way, go this way. This is a checking my horse out. How far has he advanced? See, and I may serpentine him, pull him down, make him trot square, and then let him go this way. So we're serpentine him, serpentine him, serpentine him. Just a lot of drill until eventually I can take my hands right here and I don't need the serpentine anymore. I can do it on a straightaway. I'll pull with my left hand a little and pick with my left leg and pick up the right lead right there. I can break down and trot. Can do that right in a straightaway and pick up the lead on the, going the other way by doing just the opposite. Now just watch the right leg, we'll get the left lead. And I hope we can all see that, ooh, that is nothing but progression, starting from the circle, taking the circle out, introducing the leg, going to the serpentine, and then eventually going to a straightaway type of an operation. Now, that's one method of getting your horse good on his leads. A second method that you will, and I'll say this, most horses need both methods most of the time. And particularly with a lot of older horses, that that technique won't, won't work. You've got to take an older horse and go back and try that technique, and it won't work on him for one simple reason. He will not relax and stay down in that trot. He won't relax and stay in there because he's learned to protect himself, hold back a little bit so he can get up in the, what we call the wrong lead. So if he'd ever really relax, you might stop on him for two weeks and do nothing but trot him and never even try to get him to lope. And if he ever relaxes, quit protecting himself and really extends, he will get in the lead. But a lot of times a quicker method of doing it, and we do this with young horses as well as old, is simply to take her hands and her leg and her hand pressure now and bend the horse's head back into the rail, away from the lead, squeeze with the off leg so that the horse cannot take anything but that lead that I want to show it. Ooh. Then I took the, took the left lead, I pushed with the inside leg. We'll go back over here now and we're going to do it to the right. See me from time to time, I have a very, very mild snaffle on this mare's face. Big, soft snaffle. From time to time, she's pushing and rooting on it. And if you'll watch good horsemanship, you see me bump her off of it. Say, quit that. I have a very mild snaffle in there that is, is very soft, and she, like all horses, will get heavy on that snaffle. So rather than letting her get heavy, I bump her off of it, remind her that it's there, and get her back quiet. So everybody needs to learn that technique and how to do it. Now you pull that head this way. No, we're not going to two-track. All right, pull that head over there. I want that right lead right there. I want this lead. And I've opened her up where that's the only way she can get it. That's the only lead she can take. And turn around and do it the other way and see that I open up that circle, that, that leg right there, the left shoulder and the left leg. I get her two tracking across here, and then when I punch her with this right leg over here, she'll pick up that lead. So that again is the is a second method of getting a horse good on the lead. Ooh. That same thing now will be progression, same method, we'll progress. We'll go along here, I really exaggerated, and again, this mare didn't want to that much exaggeration. 
but I just pick up the head lightly. See me turn it into the rail and just squeezed out with that off leg very softly. Ooh. Caught myself not thinking right over there a minute ago and really didn't stop the mare right like I should. So we're gonna talk about that in a little bit, but I thought I needed to correct it now. I'm thinking ahead and really didn't ride my horse real good right in here just a while ago. Now that same technique on the lead, let's look at it. Finally winds up where you don't do hardly anything with a head. Nobody sees you do anything. You just pick up on his head and let him lope right out. I hope we can all see that that is progression and that we started with something that was, ooh, something that was very obvious at first, obvious to the horse, obvious to us as we sit and watch it. And we progress up to a very subtle cue that the horse can handle. Now, if the, any time we try to make that progression and a horse goes to making a lot of errors, what do we do? Drop back to something he can handle until we get him up to where he's very light right on straight away and he can use one lead as good as the other and he just as soon to take the one we're asking him for, all right? So that's kind of got us on to the lead thing. Now that we're in the lead, let's talk about again trying to get our horse really functional and have some good circles on him. Now you hear circles all of your life with horses. Horses come to this world or barn knowing how to go straight away. Our big challenge is to discipline the horse and train the horse to get all of his natural ability out of him. And you won't find horses out in the pasture or out in the paddock or anywhere else loping circles and trying to discipline themselves. But they do know how to go straight away. So you've got, you spent all of your life with the horse working at just what we're talking about here. Now what I'm trying to do here is get a round circle. I'd like for this mare to be round from her head to her tail. That makes my circle round, all right? I'll pull a little bit with my left hand, stick her head inside just a little, and I'm gonna exaggerate over here, but I'll take my left leg and push her out. That keeps her round. See her get more round since I did that. So I do that a lot to make the horse stay round. A lot of people, when they don't have enough flexibility in their horse's head, and they try to pull their horse in, the horse, whoo. People try to pull their horse and bow him, and when they pull his head, the horse falls right over their leg, and the circle gets smaller. We don't want the circle to get smaller, just want the horse to get rounder, get some bow in his body. And the way you do that is put that leg on the inside. On the inside now, because you've already gotten him in the lead. I get him up in the lead with my right foot, I hold him out round in it with my left foot. So I keep him out there. And plus, if I get his head fixed real good, I can do it all with one rein. I can kind of drop that rein, and this one's got to pull on his head, and I can push against his neck with this rein. Without even using a foot, I can push, push, push until I get round. So you can do it with one hand. Ooh. Everything you do one way, you've got to do the other way. Use your leg the same way. Train the horse and discipline the horse. Look kind of through that bridle and get, that ho get, the, get themselves round. Where they can go round, use your inside leg to push him out. Use the rein pressure on his neck to push him over. Watch again as I use that rein pressure just to push that horse over, which makes him get round. I could use the inside leg if I needed it. So we spend a lot of time in circles, out wide, down small, trying to get the horse to hold a good cadence, be steady, lope right straight through the bridle, and be just a nice horse to ride. That we can just lope nice little circles if I want to pull this circle down, that I can, and the horse can keep loping. And very few, a lot of people just have a lot of trouble with this because they just haven't worked at it enough. You can pull that down, you can teach the horse to go back out then, get wider, and then you begin to get control of it. You got feet and hands and you can discipline him and train him to do what you want him to do. Ooh. 
I want to bump her off of the bit a little bit. And you don't need to do that. You ride a horse around and use your leg on him a lot and you push on him a lot, he'll get heavy in his mouth. I'll trot this mare around just a little bit now and just work on her face a little, work on her head. I'll just bump her mouth a little. Let her know she can go without me having to pull on her all the time. Although until I get what I want, I'll probably be in that mouth. I'll be pulling on it. But you know, I don't want her to just get heavy and go to ignore it a bit, so get out of it a little bit. Ooh, do some other things. As I said, I've got a very mild snaffle on here. I don't mind bumping her mouth pretty hard because it's mild, it's not gonna hurt anything, and it's gonna reinforce and discipline in her what she needs to do. So if we do all of those things, we're gonna have nice circles, have good leads on our horses, we're gonna have them broke, and uh, we're gonna have, uh, when I say broke, they're gonna be functional. We can lope good circles with them, we can relax with them, we can enjoy them. And if you learn to do that with a horse, and if you get those circles down, this same horse is gonna lope nice right on straight away. You're gonna enjoy him a lot more and he doesn't have to stay in that circle. But the circle's where he learned it. Where he's just a nice horse to ride and that you can put him into a gate and can hold it. Ooh. Okay? Now, all of those things are basic and fundamental. We're gonna use rider skills. We're gonna use a little psychology. We've got to have some bidding. We've got to know what our negative and positive reinforcements are, and we've got to practice to get them done. But I think we'll have a better horse to ride when we're through. We'll enjoy it. We'll be challenged ourselves. We'll feel good about what we're doing as a horseman, and we'll have a better horse. And we'll be happy to say when we put our horse up today, that horse is a better horse because I rode him. And that's the pride we all need to develop. You know, throughout this tape, uh, this mare begins to show us that she maybe has had enough of, of these kinds of intense, uh, concentrated practice by that. I mean, she didn't want to side pass real well. She seemed a little hot in the bridle. And I'm not sure we're getting the point over good because she's not a perfect pupil throughout this thing. So what we've got here is another horse that's uh, older, more settled, and quieter. And we should look at some of that behavior on the side pass and otherwise and to know that is desirable and what we're shooting for. Let me take this older, a little more experienced horse over here to the wall and talk a little bit more about the side pass and then I'll pull them out in the middle. Horse that's a little more used to the pressure on his legs, it's a little quieter, where we can just raise our hands and put a foot on him, talk to him a little and get him to move both hind feet and front feet at the same time and move him across a lot more correctly, keep his body a lot straighter. Again, push that foot out. And you see a lot more distinct step in this horse. You see him quieter, you see a longer, cleaner step. See him keep his hind end, his rear quarters and his fore quarters a lot more uniform and move across there a lot more obedient with a lot less concern about me. And that kind of comes with time and I think we can drive him right out here in the middle and see the ultimate kind of, and I did that over there with kind of that rain we talked about earlier, kind of called a handful. You could spread your hands out and do it. But he's getting ready to be done, you know, with a split rein so you can hold him here and get a lot more obedience out of him and get him crossing over a lot steadier and a lot smoother. Trying to get this horse to move off her feet. This ground is extremely heavy here right now. Makes it a little hard for a horse to move off, move around there. But I think if we add that to what we're talking about, the horse that will accept the leg, move off of it with a lot less fuss, and then we were getting in the Palomino mare and you get into these older horses, the more they've had of it, they have to have very little spurring. They're very obedient to the foot and they get a lot quieter. I think we ought to show that there's a, little, a lot more of the ultimate and what we'd like to have in the side pass. One more thing that we might talk about here <clears throat> while we're on a little older horse here is to talk about in the turnaround, how we would go about 
in the turnaround using also the reverse arc. I didn't talk about it with the Palomino mare where we used all bending the head in and trying to get the horse to step across in front as a build up to the turnaround. We can also use what we call a reverse arc where we take the horse's head away from him and pull it out away from it and teach him to step across, put a leg in it. We make him lead with that shoulder over there. What we're trying to do is make him lead here with his left shoulder. And that is sometimes when we do all the nose inside, we never get the shoulder out here to catch up, to stay up with his nose. And if we're having trouble with that, you can go to the reverse arc take his head away from him here, push him around, make him lead with that shoulder first. And then when you take that same horse then, after you've reversed arced him, and then go back in here, he'll stay up a lot better with his shoulder, keep his body a lot straighter. So we can use that pretty good. You see a horse here that I can handle pretty loosely, it's certainly not trying to run off, that you can get that maneuver done. So. Just a little technique in there on the reverse arc. We didn't show it, we showed it all with the head on the inside. And the reverse arc is only to keep that horse staying up. Make him move a little brisker in front, and you want him to move here, and you want that shoulder to stay up with his head. You can go this route right here, where you hold his head, and make him then, in a sense, lead with that shoulder. And then when you turn around and go back to it and let him hold his head a little straighter, then he pretty well will stay up with it and will move a lot straighter. So the reverse arc is, is useful to us here as well. I think as we look back over this tape, we're relatively pleased that we're able to present to you and uh, show you a method for beginning to get some of those basic maneuvers into your horse. Uh, I think throughout that tape, uh, we emphasize again head control and control of the horse. Uh, the foot meaning something to him, being able to move him with a foot and be able to move him with her hands and do some things with him. Develop th that control and those cues. Apologize, I think, throughout that tape a little bit. I thought the mare again was a pretty willing pupil, at times a little gappy in her mouth, which I, I didn't think was that nice to look at. But let me make one more comment about basic maneuvers, basic horsemanship, and the word basic itself. A lot of people will come to our clinics and say, I, I know the basics. Now there's a difference in knowing the basics and having heard of the basics or being able to master the basics. Having heard of them is one thing, knowing them, being able to master them is another thing. Because most people who are hunting for excellence, they want to be advanced and they're hunting for that excellence. If you really examine uh, what they're doing, they really have not mastered the basics. All good horsemen, there's not that next step, not all of that uh, secrets that are well kept from the excellent horsemen down to the intermediate and novice horsemen. What the difference in the two is, is that the excellent horseman has mastered the basics. And when you master the basics, then you all will have that excellence that you're hunting for. He's learning how to handle himself right there. Huh? Yeah.